<laughs> hey guys, I'm here with my friend Aya Brahmavara and she's been helping me work on anger because I have a lot of anger that I don't know what to do with. I don't like how it feels. I'm not used to it um, because every time I feel it, I push it down. I think it's an inappropriate emotion. Um, I've been taught that I should either be more logical or more compassionate or for whatever reason that it's not healthy for me to be angry. So I've been shoving it down. So what advice do you have for people who are struggling with anger? Uh, it's first of all, I would say, you know, anger is a universal human issue. And it's really interesting what you've been saying to me about how uh, we tend to feel it's not okay and repress or neglect to pay attention to our anger, try and sort of shove it aside, push it down, get rid of it uh, or feel guilty about it. Blame ourselves. Yeah, feel ashamed. Yeah, feel ashamed about it. It's wrong. Something's mm -hmm. wrong with me. And uh, all these are, are sort of extra burdens that we add to the simple issue of anger within. And uh, thanks to the Buddha's teachings, we have ways of uh, working with this energy. And it's like a kind of alchemy. <laughs> so, you know, uh, if we can sit still, which is very difficult when there's anger in the body, mm -hmm. anger in the heart, the mind, it's really hard to stay still. Yeah, it's like a physical thing where you're just like, oh, I say, like, I want to crawl out of my body. That's how I feel. I just don't like the physical, the sensation of it and the emotion of it just makes me feel like I just need to like jump out of my skin yeah and sometimes also if we think about why we're angry who we're angry with what happened mm. there might be that feeling to uh, do something say something yeah um, to take action yes or have a reaction action. do something about it mm -hmm. make it uh, it can feel very justified it can feel that uh, I need to put this right, I need to say this to somebody, um, they need to know how I'm feeling and so forth. Like I either need to defend myself, explain myself, protect myself, or sometimes even I think that it's to help somebody else or protect somebody else. Yeah. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons why it seems justified to take action on your anger. On my anger. That's right. That is, you know, it's such a force. It's actually... I was saying to Kim before, it's actually like a life energy, it's vitality. This is, I did um. not believe you. <laughs> it seems really counterintuitive because to me, anger just like sucks everything good out of me and it just feels like a ball of, of anger, <laughs> of like negativity and badness. Yeah. And maybe that's because of the energy of that it's not okay. It's not okay. So then we have the anger and then we have aversion to the anger. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's uh, making it small, blocking it, constricting it, and preventing it from actually releasing, mm -hmm. you know. So, the, so there's that wish to act, the difficulty staying still with anger, but the imperative, the guidance from the Buddha to, to, to try, do our very best to do nothing, to be with the anger and to examine it. And that means to stay still, not to act, to meditate perhaps, to walk or sit in a mindful way and just to feel what we feel. And with anger, it's extremely difficult to do this, but it's not impossible. So we can help ourselves with some kind of guidelines like What's happening with the breath? Let me let me notice the breathing. How is the breathing? Really focusing on that. Mm -hmm. What's happening in the body? Is there burning or heat or is there tightness anywhere? Is there pain anywhere? Uh, we can go through the body. 
Yeah. Know? Recently, um, on the day that we had our original conversation, I was having so much anger and I was so uncomfortable with it. And so um, I came in this room and I just let my rage fill the room. <laughs> but I, I mean, it was a very physical sensation and I specifically felt it like across my chest. Every once in a while, my tummy would clench up too, but it was just this really like, and it wasn't an anxiety, it didn't feel like anxiety. I think that's another question too, like how can you tell if you're feeling angry or if you're feeling anxious or nervous or some other feeling? Well, sometimes you can't, you know, sometimes it's really hard to distinguish what's going on or to label what's going on. And actually, you know, in many ways, we don't actually have to do that. Uh, you just say, I'm feeling really uncomfortable. I don't quite know what's going on, but let me sit with it. Mm -hmm. Let me let me examine it. So it's like examining from the inside. Um, if we have a meditation practice, it's not so difficult because we're used to coming back to the body and feeling out what's going on. And we have the, over time, have a kind of baseline of this is how it is. So we can tell when... Well, the mind is caught up, the heart is caught up with strong emotion because it immediately we notice, oh my goodness, there's so much going on in the body. Uh, let's see what's happening. Let's really examine that. So, so really what I'm pointing to is that the way to be with anger is to allow the anger to not make it a problem, not reject it, not get into adding suffering by blaming ourselves or judging the anger but just recognizing this is happening mm -hmm. and that it's okay actually and we can know that we're perfectly safe it's perfectly safe and contained if we're able to just be still with it that's so interesting that you talk about safety because i think that uh, when i feel anger i don't it it doesn't feel safe it yeah. feels like um, I might do something unsafe or that, that I am, I am not safe. Like that I feel like I am now like in a fight or flight mode or I, I'm, I'm like hyper vigilant or whatever because I'm angry and so my anger must mean there's danger or something. Yeah. It can feel really scary and dangerous and maybe partly that's because our conditioning can be that anger is something either we repress or we do something unskillful and we get into all sorts of trouble. <laughs> so we may have that in our history. And so there's a fear. And that fear is actually quite a wholesome thing because it often helps to keep us in check. It's actually, I would say, probably better to repress anger <laughs> than to act on anger because mm -hmm. the results in the long term will tend to be a lot worse if we do or say something unskillful. But thankfully, with the spiritual practice, we, we the, the bedrock, the foundation of almost any spiritual practice is uh, precepts or virtue or living a moral life. So there are these very clear guidelines that we keep um, not to harm, not to harm yes. others, not to speak unskillfully. So if you have that kind of uh, these precepts in mind, <laughs> we can feel like we have almost like a, a safety net. Uh, okay, whatever happens, however I feel, I'm not going to harm anyone. I'm going to do my utmost not to say anything painful or unskillful or hurtful or that will cause more difficulty. Uh, the, the, the wish to seek revenge, I'm not going to nourish that. I'm mm. going to try and just leave that aside. Uh, what I really want to do is to look after myself, right? So not to harm myself, you know, with this burning anger. And and the, but to to repress it, that's where I think that it is it's dangerous to yourself. That's where like the resentment comes in, like physical illness and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, a lot of my friends are don't have precepts and they don't necessarily have religion. Um, most of my friends have some sort of moral, they're moral, you know, and they, and they, you know, try not to harm others, but it's not necessarily that safety net that you were talking about. And most of my friends, I would say, don't have a regular meditation practice. Mm. So um, what I thought was really helpful was when you gave me the exercise. 
can you uh, tell us about uh, the specific meditation exercise that you had me do? Well, I mean, what I, I remember saying to you is to, okay, you're feeling angry, so try to uh, come to the root of the issue, come to the source of the problem, which is that something's happening in the body and mind. So, of course, there's a, if you say there's a reason for the anger, this happened and he said that and I did this and then, but actually, coming back to the root of the issue, there's something happening right now in the mind and body. And so to come to that place, so bring all the attention to the source and just to be with it and breathing it in, breathing it out, you know, and uh, being willing to stay steady and stay still and see what it does because nothing lasts, you know, um, so what I remember saying to you is, you know, so you'll notice that uh, when the mind is turned to the body and the feeling in the body, we can get quite interested in that. And actually the, the story can fall away and then we're, we're in a good place. We're in a place where uh, things can transform, energies can transform, anger can be released. It, it doesn't have to be released by us doing that. But it, it's released by, uh, excuse me, mm. it's released by our uh, willingness just to stay steady and still and observe what's going on. So it's as if the anger releases itself. We can notice that over time. Now it may not be the case, it may be that the mind keeps going back to the, the issue and we're, we're just rolling in the anger. So. It takes enormous patience and perseverance often to just keep coming back to the body, coming back to the breath and being with the energy and then noticing how it changes and what it changes into. It could change into in so many different ways. We could get really interested in the body and how the body feels and how to relax the body. The body will quite naturally relax with this kind of attention. We can have a, a, an attitude of kindness you know, kindness towards this energy, kindness towards this pain, because it's pain that we're yeah. experiencing. You physical know. and mental pain. Oh, you know, so may I be well, you know, may, may there be peace here, may there be release. You know, we can have kind and loving thoughts towards these feelings, but actually time will always do the work of, uh, you can literally sit and watch those feelings fade. Well, the, and at some point they'll cease. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet. But uh, the most useful part of, I think, uh, what you told me was what I should do when things do start to ebb. Yeah. Do you remember? Well, yes, I do remember. I mean, what you can do if you really want to work with a situation, something that's triggered you and you're boiling about it. And, you know, the mind will want to find all sorts of solutions and ways to, to act and speak in such a way as to, to sort of give some sort of relief, some sort of uh, resolution. But in fact, the best way we can find relief and resolution is to keep coming back to the, the feelings and the way, the way of it, the way of this moment. How is it? And what I said to you is when, you know, sometimes the anger you'll notice uh, feelings come and go. So you get to notice that that's wonderful to start with. But if the feelings are uh, really triggered, they'll tend to come and go in waves. So you'll have a wave wash through of anger or grief or fear or whatever it might be. And then peace. Oh, it's got, yeah, I feel it. I feel much better now. And then whoop, you know, another wave can come. Mm -hmm. Or if that doesn't happen, what I said to you is if you if you really want to look at anger, for instance, you can uh, notice the fading, notice the ceasing, and then just consciously bring back to mind uh, a trigger situation that this got was you angry the in most the first counterintuitive <laughs> helpful thing that you said <laughs> it is counterintuitive because it's like why would i want to do that i just i'm just starting to feel better why would i want to go back into that but actually it's a, a good practice because you can really it's almost like scraping out the barrel you know so you can just test yourself in a way it's like okay i feel quite peaceful now i feel quite relaxed 
let's remember what happened again one and then see if the angers if there's any residual anger or not and chances are there will be and then you have a chance to rather than kind of like uh, being bombarded by the waves of emotion that can come and go we're actually kind of surfing you know it's like you're actually consciously uh, empowering yourself to go there it's really about uh, facing up to suffering and we can be very empowered in this process of actually seeking out you know the sources of suffering within and I wouldn't uh, necessarily spend all my time doing this but sometimes when there's an issue when there's something very potent happening um, some source of anger or source of sadness or source of uh, fear or anxiety just to keep touching in and seeing how is it now how is it now am i still worried about that or has it passed let's just see and so in this way you can really kind of empower yourself what, what i thought was interesting about it was that it felt like i was training myself to tolerate the discomfort. So I was like, I'm choosing, I was in this room, small room, I was filling it with my rage. I was just letting myself feel it. And then, and it would start to ebb a little bit. And then I would bring a picture to mind. You specifically were like, bring a picture of, of what's bothering you or some specific part of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so then I would ugh, feel it all over again. And, and still I knew I was just gonna sit in this room and I wasn't gonna do anything about it. Yeah. So it was like I was training myself to be okay with the discomfort of it so that like in the future when I feel that anger arise, maybe I don't act or react as much as I would have. And then even just the simple but not easy task of feeling it, of just sitting here, it was wildly uncomfortable. It is a wildly uncomfortable emotion for me. Yeah. But to, to sit here and and to feel it and to like just say yeah i'm suffering i'm gonna sit here and suffer and i don't have to act on it it was really powerful so i kim i mean that's so well put exactly to to be willing to be with suffering everything in us you know when when we experience painful feelings everything in us wants to turn away and distract mm -hmm. and, and just do anything but that you know anything but that so we've we're programmed we're conditioned to turn away from suffering yeah to ignore it but what you're what you are doing is just turning towards it again and again and when we do that it's extraordinary it's it is counterintuitive it's like you wouldn't think that would be a good idea no it seems like a terrible idea <laughs> <laughs> i was like are you sure <laughs> you're like no 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 just try it <laughs> you but, know yeah. this is the this is the first noble truth of the lord buddha is there is suffering that there, there is life is not satisfactory there are issues we all have <laughs> issues if nothing else we have the issue of getting old and or getting sick and dying that's an issue, mm, it's a huge <laughs> issue. Yeah. that is suffering <laughs> and so we 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 you know we can't not we can't avoid suffering mm -hmm. uh, until we're fully liberated we're going to suffer but the main suffering that we can work with and let go of and be free from is the suffering of wanting things to be different wanting to get away from what what's painful or wanting to move towards what's pleasant uh, and this push and pull is like a it's like a constant actually constant source of torment for us mm -hmm. and we don't have to do that yeah and we can be free so there is this uh, incredible teaching which is inviting us to come again and again to the places that are uncomfortable and to recognize that if we're willing to stay present and to feel what we feel, those energies can really transform the heart.